Good morning, fans of Privateer FX. Coming at you on Non Farms Friday here. I believe it's the 6th of March. Yes, indeed it is. We got CAD employment and U.S. employment. Uh, this afternoon. These have been duds recently. Today it should be more volatile for a couple of reasons. Uh, the way the information is going to be disseminated to the world has changed. Uh, so it'll be a little bit less liquidity out there until people figure out how this is going to work. Instead of sending it to the news agents and then the news agents send it to the world, I think this is going to go direct from uh, the employment agencies. Uh, I'm going to have to do a little bit more research on this. I've been a bit bit lazy about that. Uh, but people people at the firm have been talking about it, so I'll, I'll get squared away on that this morning. Uh, but we're expecting a little more volatility, which is a good thing, right? Um, Non-farms today. Before non-farms, we got German factory orders, French trade, Italian retail sales. The reason I bring up all the euro uh, is because we printed 49 overnight, which matches um, the weekly high from August, last August. Um, I guess to be specific, August 7th. Um, here we are, right? We're, we're, we're either at the very tippity top of this range or um, this thing is going to keep plowing higher. Boy, we're stretched, right? This move from 107.60 to 112.50. Um, you know, 400, 450-odd, 400 470-odd points. Straight line, V-shaped bottom there. We're due for some sideways action. Uh, We'll see. So 50 is now the key. Um, probably a non-farms deal, uh, but we got to keep our eyes open in Europe in case uh, there's some European news or whatnot. Let's take a look at gold. As you can imagine, we're approaching uh, the bingo highs, 1691. Um, we are not long gold. Wish we were. We're not. Don't really know what to say here. I can't really recommend getting long at 1680. Let's see if we can get a print at 90 and then some sideways action and then we can get maybe a safer way to get long than just throwing a dart at the chart. Um, anyway, gold looks bid. A lot of lonely bids down below. Uh, here's something ironic now. Anyone who leaves their bid 1630, 1628, which I'm sure many of you have. If you get given those now, it's wrong. Um, and this is the irony of trading and, and whatnot. Uh, you had your chance to get them, you didn't get them. Now, if we go down there, if we revisit 1628, 1630, something massive has changed uh, and you're going to get screwed. Uh, so don't leave stale bids below the market. Uh, this is a classic error. Um, I got caught in it. The reason it's fresh on my mind is, is on Wednesday I got caught with some stale offers and BTPs uh, that I'd forgotten about. All of a sudden I'm short more than I need to be short. And it's a clusterfuck. So uh, if you have stale bids down there, don't. Uh, just pull them, right? Freshen up. Take another... Uh, take another look. Sterling seems to like the new appointment for the Bank of England. Um, I don't really know what to do with this. We're kind of in the middle of nowhere. There will be a few people who will, who will draw this line. Um, kind of sexy in a sense. We didn't quite touch it, but I don't know what to do with cable. It's really driven by Euro Sterling these days. Um, and Euro Sterling... I don't know what to do with that either. I mean, uh, Euro's going up like a, like a freight train. Euro sterling's in the middle of nowhere, so I guess I, in a nutshell, I just don't really know what the hell to do with that crap. So, anyway, I'm pulling up the Euro Swiss just to be a jerk. Uh, SNB should be around here. 
don't trade uh, don't trade your Swiss waste time dollar yen uh, the huge level is 104.50 are we gonna get there today definitely not um, consolidation you want to sell this back um, back at 82 let's talk about 82 yesterday a few yards went through at that price was it the post office Japanese post office uh, perhaps you know BOJ trying to smooth things out I don't know that was a weird one it was very old school but what I really liked about it was the market in general was was just not having it uh, they were just happy to give that bid uh, no respect for the central bank or for whoever that was buying yards of dollars. Um, I really enjoyed that. Very old school. Um, and is it endemic of uh, the clout of the central bank? I don't know. Uh, that's probably a stretch. But it was just. Uh, interesting to watch 82 bid for unlimited amount of dollars and it was 82 figure it was 82 and 82.3 um, no fear uh, this market or no fear filled with fear if, if you know what I mean uh, anyway speaking of fear let's look at the uh, ES chart um, see this massive consolidation here uh, yesterday obviously 3100 down to 40 back to 82 um, down to 06 then 97 and then 35 and now here we're 76 we still um, I just want to remind everyone we're still 120 points from the lows uh, which seems likely a likely target so um, I don't know, buckle up, stay short. Uh, it's hard. I know it's hard. You have these big 4% up days. Those are no fun, right? Um, I would recommend tactically trading it just because that's how we do it. Uh, you don't maximize uh, the full breadth of moves, but your p &L is is much steadier and just easy, easier to manage. Um, so... Anyway, what else we got? Dollar CAD, we got CAD employment today. Dollar CAD doesn't really want to go higher. It really just doesn't. And we had plenty of chances to uh, take a look at this 134.50. Not really happening for it. 38 to high yesterday. Um, I, don't, I don't mind being short Dollar CAD, I have to say. Uh, even though oil is is uh, is getting crushed, but the correlation with oil is is less now. Let's look at this oil quickly. CL, man, <laughs> OPEC, what a what a what a disaster! A bunch of clowns. Um, oil is gonna go to forty bucks. I I think this is kind of the most obvious. Um, if you ask your brother who's a computer technologist who doesn't watch the market he would say to you immediately uh, less cars less demand factories are closed schools are closed the demand for oil is gonna just collapse uh, and so we will certainly touch 4230 probably break it um, tricky because of the comments and whatnot and even trickier in a sense, like yesterday, we were just ready. We were ready to sell, baby. We were like hand on the trigger. And what happened? Nothing. Didn't get paid. Didn't even come close to the levels we wanted to sell. So now we have all these lonely offers up here that are just never going to get paid. 47.60, the high. What? I mean, my God. Pathetic. Not exactly what they were hoping for. Anyway, uh, dollar China. This needs to turn. We kind of turned yesterday. China is not in like some amazing great place, right? If the West stops buying shit, you know, it's. I don't know. Uh, I'm not. Uh, I, I'm not very good at trading dollar China. I don't trade it too often. This is dollar CNH offshore. This chart does not make any sense to me. Um, dollar China should be higher. 
Bitcoin finally broke higher yesterday. Uh, 89.75 was a nice little entry point. Long Bitcoin in, into this mess seems seems clever. And now here is uh, the Tower of Babel. U.S. fixed income. My my, this is this is going to be a disaster when this turns. This is so hysterically mispriced. Um, I don't even really know what to say. Eighty-three and a half basis points. We don't have a position in this, but now we're in the we're in the position now where um, you just have to sell high ones. Um, I'm not a great bond trader. I don't have tons of experience with it, but that doesn't even matter, right? You're just gonna look at average true ranges, and and so for today, we're just gonna, we may even sell one here at the open, and then offer uh, offer five at at uh, thirteen and ten at twenty eight, um, just to get a little short position on, uh, because this is unsustainable. People uh, are confusing. America with Europe and Japan. If some, if one more person tells me this is the Japanification of the world, I would say, well, you can't really Japanify America. Uh, America is not Germany. Uh, America is its own unique, wild, hysterical animal, um, and ten-year yields to zero is just really not part of sort of this obsessive, compulsive, workaholic, addictive, materialistic, uh, economy, driven economy. Uh, so we're going to be looking to short bonds. going to be tricky, just like when you're shorting stocks between 3,200 and 3,400, those those 200 S&P handles, if you recall, we were, we were just trying to sell high ones and tactically be short on the day, get a little bit of an average, and get used to the price action, get ready uh, to hammer this when it turns. Because when fixed income turns in the U.S., this will effectively be the trade of a lifetime, uh, much more than stocks. So keep your eye on this. Uh, again, I, I, I'm no fixed income guru. Maybe you should talk to some other people, but uh, just as a market watcher for, for 30 years, we're getting to the bubbly stages of the U.S. bond market. All right, I've said enough. Wow, I've said a lot. Sorry about that. Uh, heading into non-farms today. I'm going to keep a quiet eye on this euro level at 50. Core long is the way. Um, and we're going to be short dollar cad today. So uh, good luck out there, people. If I don't speak to you, which I obviously won't, uh, have a great weekend. I will uh, talk to you all on Monday. Ciao.